Hey everyone, my name is Ben and you're listening to a daily dose of English. This is a short, simple podcast that you can listen to every day to improve your English. You can find the transcripts for all episodes and more on benslanguagelab.com. I'm glad you can make it today. In this episode, we're going to be talking about Pig Latin. What a strange episode title, right? Maybe you saw that and thought, I know both of those words, but I've never seen them put together like that before. And Pig Latin is something that is very weird, but in my experience, everybody uh, from North America knows about it. Um, I haven't asked people from other parts of the English-speaking world, so maybe they know about it. And actually, honestly, it might exist in other languages, but I don't know. I have no idea where it comes from. Actually, let me do a quick Google search. Okay, I've done my Googling, and it looks like it is a thing that is primarily in English. Um, according to Wikipedia, there it's it says... Pig Latin is something for English where words are altered. I guess I haven't explained what, what the heck Pig Latin is. Pig Latin is sort of a language game that kids often use or learn where they change around uh, the order of words or like the order of letters just in regular words to make them sound funny. Um, and I'll explain how it works in a second. But I want to look – I'm here looking at the um, – history a little bit, which is kind of interesting. And it says that there are versions of sort of a Pig Latin-like game or thing um, in German, Swedish, Finnish, Italian, um, Spanish also has something like that, maybe Estonian, French. So it seems to be a fairly European thing with a couple of different versions in other parts of the, or in parts of the continent. However, we're going to start by talking about um, Pig Latin specifically. And so what you do is it, it's a, you kind of just move words around. Um, and it's relatively simple in how you do it, but then it ends up sounding really funny. So um, what you do is you take the first uh, consonant cluster at the beginning of a word, and you put it at the end, and then you add um, an A to the end. So... The word so pig Latin would be ig pe atin lay because pig becomes ig, then you put the p to the end, and then you add an a ig pe atin lay. Um, and then for like hello would be alohe, right? Or scram would be am scray. Or an, a common one that you might actually hear is ixne, um, because people actually do use pig Latin, um, sort of as a part of modern culture in a way. And but it's typically to say like no to something. So ixne is short is, is would be nix, um, which is to say no to something. Um, so for example, uh, no to the no to the green. So you could say like ixne on the green or ixne on the een gray, right? And that's that would, how how it would sound. Typically, people will just do the pig Latin on the ixne because not everybody knows how to do it. Because it's kind of a mental challenge to be able to actively like translate real words into pig Latin words, um, and so and it ends up sounding really funny because I was saying things like "ends fray" instead of "friends" or um, "egin bay" instead of "begin," right? Or I'm just kind of finding random words. "Odd cast pay." My name is N Bay. Um, let's see if I can do the introduction to this podcast. Um, hey, hey. Everyone, a I'm a nom aim bay aim nay <laughs> is a n bay and a or yay isening lay ute a a ailey day os day of a English a uh, yeah, that's hard, <laughs> but it sounds very strange and obviously it's not English. <clears throat> it's not a real like nobody actually spoke this. Um, clearly it was like, and it's invention for a kind of a game. Apparently it, it kind of goes back to like Shakespeare, but probably even earlier when, um, it was talked like reference as dog Latin, which is, um, not pig Latin, but similar ish. Right. Um, but I don't really know much else about it in that sort of sense. 
but now you do. You've heard of Pig Latin before, and you kind of understand what it is. Um, it's very goofy, right? It sounds sort of funny, and it's not too hard to do, and so you can make a joke about it or whatever, but nobody ever like will say a whole sentence in it. I do also want to talk about Aben Globish as well, because it's a very similar game. That um, get, Let me Google this one as well. I don't know if it has a Wikipedia article. Okay, after Googling, it is not on Wikipedia, interestingly enough, but Aben Globish does appear on languagegames.neocities.org slash Aben Globish. And believe it or not, Aben Globish means the word English in Aben Globish. Because all that you do with ob and globish is you add an ob before every vowel sound. Um, and that's it, right? So English become ing is the first syllable, right? There's one vowel sound, so it becomes obing or aben, since it's a uh, it's an e. It's just we pronounce English weird, okay? It's it's strange. And then um, then the in English would be glish would be globish, right? Because the ob goes before the i. Um, and this very, sounds very strange when you actually say something, right? So my name would be Baben. Um, Dabe Laba, Dabe Laba, Dabos, Abav, Aben Globish would be Daily Dose of English. Um, and this is a game that I remember from when I was young because people, are, um, are, are other kids basically would do this. And I actually knew a few kids that got really, really good at it, and they could actually like have a conversation in Aben Globish, which is um, really quite impressive because it's very difficult to actually do live. Um, the example here, another example word on the Aben Globish website. Oops, I just accidentally paused the recording. Sorry. Um, another example on the Aben Globish website is the word bicycle, which becomes babai sabais babai. Babai Babai Kabai Bicycle Bab Babai Sabai Kabikle Kabul. Something like that. Babai Kabai Bickle. Babai Kabai Babai yeah, I can't do it. It's too hard. I'm I'm over now. Babai Sabai Babai Sabai Kabul. Ah, there it is. Babai Sabai Kabul. It's hard. You try it, huh? <laughs> and um I know that I've I've heard of other Similar games in other languages. I think like Ubi Dubi is something else. Um, other, I, I've heard of one in Spanish as well when I asked somebody. Um, and they're all random little games like this where you add some vowels somewhere or whatever. Um, and so I wanted to make a, a little episode on this because I think they're sort of fun, right? It's not often that you'll have the chance to learn about these really random like kids games from English, um, because why would you? You're probably not growing up in the United States or in Canada or in another English-speaking country. And so I feel like I'll try to, every so often, bring up a random little, uh, bring up a topic that I think is pretty specific to um, like growing up in English, because you learn some interesting things. Um, I'll talk about like some nursery rhymes at one point. I'll talk about like some common kids games as well. Um, but yeah, let's see. Do I have anything else to share about Aben Globish or about Pig Latin for today or maybe anything similar word games? Um, I can't really think of anything, honestly. I know there's other like similar word games where you like try to trick somebody into something. Oh, actually, I do have another one to share. I just remembered one. There's a classic a game where it's more of like a puzzle. And so you ask somebody, all right, give me a, a number and I'll tell you what that number converts to. And you have to figure out how the numbers convert into something. And they go, all right, uh, six. And then the person says, six is three, three is five, five is four, and four is the magic number. Why is four the magic number? Um, and that's the game. And so they go, okay, six is three, three is five, five is four, four is magic number. All right, what about nine? And they go, nine is four, and four is four, so four is the magic number. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, I'm not going to bore you with the details. <clears throat> if you want, you can try it. You can probably Google four is the magic number and find like a game to play with that. But the trick is the number of letters in the le in the number. 
because four is the only number, uh, the only small number. I think it's probably the only number that has its own number of letters in the word, right? F O U R, one, two, three, four. But everything else, one is three, two is three, three is five, four is four, right? And so there's all these little differences between the numbers. And so you can always get down to four no matter what number you start with. And so you can ask increasingly difficult numbers and they'll give you um, 10 is three, three is five, five is four, and four is minus number, right? And eventually you'll get right back to four and you can figure it out that way. Um, but yeah, anyways, I've talked too long for this episode. Um, I hope that you enjoyed it and maybe learned a little something about Pig Latin or Aben Globish. And so I'm going to say, um, abai to Yabu. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>